Welcome to lecture number 13 for ECE 461 control systems, state space and canonical forms. Now, state space is a matrix way to describe a system. It's how MATLAB actually stores systems. MATLAB is a matrix language, and if you think about it, somebody had to write the C code that MATLAB's written in. Trying to input a system as 3s plus 5 over s squared plus 2s plus 7 is not that easy. It's really easy inputting matrices in a seed, though. So state space is a very convenient way for computers to represent dynamic systems. Uh, we're going to find it's actually a really easy way to um, describe circuits, mass spring systems, and other systems. Um, times have kind of changed. Back when I was in college, um, actually back when I was in college, Ronald Reagan was still running around espousing supply-side economics, uh, but that's beside the point. Back when I was in college, you would do whatever you could to try to come up with a minimum number of equations. Now with MATLAB, I don't care if I get 20 different equations, 20 equations, 20 unknowns. MATLAB will find the transfer function for that. So right now what matters most is get the equations right. If you get the state space equations right, I can find the dynamics with MATLAB. In state space, the standard form is your x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx plus du. X are the energy states. That's the voltages on capacitors, current through inductors, uh, the position of a mass for potential energy, velocity, kinetic energy. That's one way to define X. Once you define X, I know the energy in the system. X dot is how the energy changes. If I know the energy in the system and how it's changing, I know how the system behaves. So that's kind of what state space is trying to do. If you do some algebra, solve for x, you know, bring the a left, solve for x, I get x is si minus a inverse b, substitute, this is the transfer function. Um, this is a matrix, if it is a 4 by 4 matrix, you can solve by hand, it's really painful. Um, actually, back when I was in college, that was one midterm in a class. Here's the fourth order system, find the transfer function, you got one hour ago. Now with MATLAB, uh, just throw in MATLAB and you can find it in two seconds. So. The important part, again, is get the matrices right. A couple commands that we're going to be using. I can input the system in MATLAB in state space form, SS. That's where you specify the matrices A, B, C, and D. We'll be talking about that today. The previous forms that we were using, transfer function and zero poles K, those are two other ways to input a system. Once you get the system in MATLAB, I can flip between all these any way I like. I say, given the system G, what's the A, B, C, D that correspond to that? Or what's the transfer function? Or what's the zeros, poles, and gain? Um, just got to get the system into MATLAB somehow. So starting out, since we're doing state space, a little bit of background on matrix algebra. If I have an N by M matrix, it has N rows and M columns. For example, a 2 by 3 matrix has 2 rows, 3 columns. If I multiply a matrix by a scalar, every element is multiplied by that scalar. If I add matrices, the dimensions have to match. I can add a 2 by 3 plus a 2 by 3. If the dimensions don't match, it doesn't make any sense. You can't do it. And MATLAB's going to give you an error. When you multiply, if you multiply matrices, the inner dimension has to match. So a 2 by 3 times a 3 by 2 is a 2 by 2. And what happens is you take the first row, times the first column, that's A11. First row times second column, that's C12. Second row times first column, C21. Second row times second column, C22. That's matrix multiply. And note that multiplication is not commutative. A times B is not B times A. So you got to watch the order. Also definition, the matrix inverse is whatever it takes so that A times its inverse is the identity matrix, uh, the matrix version of 1. There's a couple ways to do that. You probably covered that in Math 129. We're using a MATLAB, so the easiest way is just do the inverse of A, which is I and V of A. Now, to place the system in state space form, the procedure is as follows. First, you write your n equations, n unknowns. Um, That'll typically be voltage nodes for circuits, uh, mass spring systems, write the next acceleration on the mass. Come up with your n equations for n unknowns. Solve for the highest derivative, and then rewrite 
in this form. So the derivative of x, x1, is a function of x1, x2 in the input. The derivative of x2 is a function of x1, x2 in the input. Once I get in this form, write it in matrix form. So in matrix form, this is the derivative, or s, times x1, x2. The derivative of x1 is x2, that's this one, minus x1 plus 0.3u. The second equation, dx2 dt, is 1 times x1 minus 1.3 times x2 plus nothing times u. And if my output is x2, I'm going to pick off the second state, 0, 1. To find the transfer function of MATLAB, once I get it in state space form, I can input the system using ss command. Then once I have g, just say, OK, now that I have that, what is the transfer function? And in this case, it's 0.3 for s squared plus 2.3 s plus 0.3. And what MATLAB did is it went through this, let's see, where was it? c times si minus a inverse b plus d. Uh, you can do that by hand. It'll take you about 40 minutes or just do one command in MATLAB. Second example, here's a fourth order system, uh, one that I really did not do not want to do by hand. In MATLAB, it's not a problem. If I have four couple differential equations, I can put that in matrix form. The first equation says the derivative of x1 is equal to u minus 2x1 plus x2, and that's everything. The second equation, derivative of x2, is x1 minus 2x2 plus x3, and that's it. Likewise for equation 3, equation 4. If my output is x4, it's of these four states, I'm going to pick off the output. Now in MATLAB, input the ABCD matrix, store it as, or input in state space form, now find the transfer function, or actually, what's more useful is the zeros, poles, and gain. What this tells you is the dominant pole, right here. That tells you it's a real pole, so there's no overshoot, no oscillations. And the settling time will be 4 over 0.12, about 32 seconds. The DC gain comes from here. Plug in S equals 0, I get 1. Uh, changing the output. In this class, we kind of look at the poles, we kind of ignore the zeros, and here's the reason. In this case, where I picked off the state x4, this is the transfer function. If I change the output, make it the average of the four voltages. Change the C matrix, change the D matrix, A and B don't change when I change the output. Find the new transfer function. If you notice, the poles stay the same. It's 1, 2.3, 3.5, 0.12. It's 1, 2.3, 3.5, 0 0.12. When you change the output, the poles stay the same. Poles are energy. I've got energy in the system, and it's decaying in some way. The poles tell you how the energy decays. If I change where I put the sensor, the energy doesn't care. The energy still decays the same way, so the poles are going to stay the same. What the zeros tell you is how those energy states add together to give you the output. The zeros change depending upon what you're measuring. So what that means is that, from a practical standpoint, if I have a system that has zeros that I don't like, what you could do is measure something else. That'll change the zeros. If I have poles that I don't like, uh, well, that's when you use feedback. That's what we'll be doing in this class. Um, but that's coming up later. So in state space form, I can represent a system using matrices. And here's something to note. If I have a fourth order system, uh, kind of like this. Let's see where we're. Here's a fourth order system. I've got 16 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1. I've got 25 degrees of freedom. A generic fourth order system only has nine constraints. So I've got 25 degrees of freedom, nine constraints. What that tells you is there's an infinite number of ways to express a system in state space form. They're all perfectly valid. Uh, some of those ways to describe them, or to express it, have names. Those are the canonical forms that we'll be talking about. Uh, many of them do not. But we'll talk about a couple canonical forms. This is a way to represent a system in matrix form. 
The simplest, most straightforward, is controller canonical form. This is actually how MATLAB stores systems. If I have a transfer function, a generic third order system or fourth order system, the way I go to controller form is I change the system. Come up with a dummy state called x, that's 1 over the denominator polynomial times u, then y will be the numerator polynomial times x. Now sticking with x, let's cross multiply, solve for the highest derivative. This is how the fourth derivative of x is made up of the input and the lower derivatives. So in terms of block diagrams, if I take the fourth derivative and integrate it four times, and here this notation is x prime 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 is the fourth derivative, here's the third derivative, second derivative, first derivative, and x. Integrate four times to get x. Now apply this equation. The fourth derivative is made up of the input minus b3 times the third derivative minus b2 times the second derivative minus b1 times the first derivative minus b0 times x and I left off some minus signs. They should all be negative. You can see this block diagram. Now add the numerator polynomial. Uh, the numerator is made up of x and its derivatives. Well here's x, here's sx, here's s squared x, here's s cubed x. Add them all up I get y. So this is called controller canonical form. It has the worst numerical properties but it's really easy. It's called controller form because the input can control and make the states anything I want. For example, if you use a delta function, the integral of a delta is 1. That says this guy. If I apply doublet, derivative of a delta, integral of a doublet is a delta, integral of a delta is 1, I can control state x3. Likewise, x2, x1. Uh, you can control all the states. That's why it's called controller canonical form. What it looks like in terms of matrices, if I define each of the integrator states to be x1, x2, x3, x4, what I get is the derivative of x1, going left to right is integration, right to left is differentiation. Derivative of x1 is x2. That's what this says. Derivative of x2 is x3. That's the second row. Derivative of x2 is x3. Derivative of x3 is x4. And this is what controller form looks like. It's always one on the op diagonals, which tells you I've got three or four cascaded integral integrators. Where the dynamics come in is that fourth row. This will be the denominator polynomial, the minus sign. The numerator polynomial shows up over here in the C matrix. I'm going to pull off x times c0 plus x1 times c1, sx, plus x2 times c2. That's what makes controller canonical form really nice. By inspection, I can go from state space to controller form. Here's the numerator polynomial. There's the denominator polynomial. And I can also go from the matrix version to the transfer function. So that's what's nice about state space or con controller canonical form. Uh, the problem with it is it has really bad numerical properties. For example, if my poles are, say, minus 100, Four poles at minus 100 makes this term 100 to the fourth power. When you get such a big spread of numbers, I get numerical problems. So that's part of the reason we keep our poles close to 1, avoids numerical problems. And also, you know, keep the numbers manageable. Second form, observer canonical form. Where well, this comes from, the transfer function, assuming d is 0, is c si minus a inverse b. If I were to transpose this, this is still a scalar. This is still a valid transfer function. Same thing. When you transpose this guy, I get b transpose, si minus a transpose, inverse, c transpose. So if I treat this as my b matrix, so back up here, b goes to c, c transpose goes to b, and a transpose goes to a. So here's a transpose, c transpose goes to b, B transpose goes to C. This is another perfectly valid way to represent it. The block diagram is this. For example, if I look at the state x1, x1 dot is minus b0 times x4 plus c0 times u. So here's c0 times u minus b0 times x4. x2 dot is x1 minus b1 times x4 plus c1 times u. 
So here's C1 times U minus B1 times X4 plus X1. So that's observer canonical form. And it's kind of neat. If I have a zero or S in the numerator, I don't have to differentiate the input. That's really good because if my input has noise and I differentiate it, I get a really noisy signal. Instead, if I have like uh, my input is S, what I could do is take U, differentiate it times S, then integrate it. That works. Or the derivative times the integral cancels. So I just take U and feed it in right here. If there's an S squared term, I just feed it in right here at X2. Because that's your S squared, integrate twice. It's the same thing as just feeding in directly. So likewise, I don't have to differentiate. I can have a 1s s squared s cubed in the numerator without any differentiation in my filter. That lack of differentiators is really, really good. That keeps your signal from getting too noisy. This is called observer form because if I take the output and its derivative, second derivative, third derivative, I can tell you what the states are. Just by looking at the output and its derivatives, I can tell you what the states are in the system. Uh, fourth version, cascade. This one actually has better numerical properties. If I took my system and I have four real poles and factor it, I can rewrite the system in this form. So what I'm going to do is create four dummy states. Uh, the input goes through a first order system that feeds a another first order system that feeds a third first order system that feeds a fourth system. I've got four cascaded first order systems. This one has much better numerical properties. Uh, kind of think of it, keep it simple. Simple systems work better than complicated systems. I can't get much simpler than a first order system. To get the numerator, what I do is I've got C4 times X4, which has our, all four poles. C3 just sees three poles. Or another way to think of it is C3 has four poles times S plus P4. C2 just sees two poles, or it's four poles times S plus P3 times S plus P4, and likewise for C1. Put this all together, and I can implement any polynomial I want. Essentially, C1 is the S cubed term. The S squared term combines these two, S, and so on. Uh, this is the generic system I can implement using cascade form. Much better numerical properties. And what it looks like in state space is x1 dot right here is u minus p1 x1 dot. x2 dot, which is right here, is x1 minus p2 x2. x3 dot right here is x2 minus p3 x3. So this is what the system looks like in cascade form. The nice thing about it, the eigenvalues are easy to see. For upper triangular matrices, the eigenvalues are just the diagonal. And the C is a little more complicated to calculate, but here's another way to implement it. The last form has the best numerical properties, and it's also the hardest to get to, is Jordan form. If I do a partial fraction expansion, I'm going to get four terms. I can implement that as four systems added together in parallel. In that case, the state space model, the A matrix is diagonal. You can't get any better numerical properties than a diagonal system. That's basically four first order uncoupled systems. Uh, C and or the B matrix and C matrix are kind of arbitrary. If I multiply, pre multiply by C1 or post multiply by C1, the net result is C1. So this term times that term has to be C1. This term times that term has to be C2. Uh, a couple ways to do it. But this is Jordan canonical form. So in summary, state space is a way to express a dynamic system using matrices. It's how MATLAB stores dynamic systems. There's an infinite number of ways to store to represent a system in state space form. So it's kind of like pick your favorite canonical form. If the numerator has S terms, you don't have to take derivatives. Each of the canonical forms handles the S's in the numerator by modifying the B and or C matrices. And also, MATLAB is really useful for going from state space to transfer functions. If you have MATLAB and I have the state space form, I can tell you what the zeros, poles, and gain are just in a couple keystrokes. 
That's lecture number 13 for ECE 461 Control Systems. State Space and Canonical Forms.